Hi, Hi Sarah, Emily. how are you? Good, I'm Sarah Posner with Religion Dispatches, and today I've got with me, or with me by phone, <laughs> Emily Hauser. She's a writer and blogger. She contributes at the Daily Beast's blog, Open Zion, and also she writes at her own blog, and you can find her on Twitter at Emily L. Hauser, where she always has something to say. <laughs> and so I'm glad to have her here today with me to say it here. Uh, so let's let's start out with something that happened right in sort of your backyard. Uh, last week, uh, Michelle Bachman showed up at Kol Nidre services at a conservative synagogue in Chicago, mm -hmm. which apparently a lot of the um, members of that congregation were quite disturbed uh, that that she would come on such a solemn uh, on such a solemn occasion. Right. Uh, it was, it's interesting. I have to wonder um, if she, like a lot of people, was confused about the meaning of the word conservative in front of the word synagogue. Yes. Uh, because right. Because conservative, of course, is a movement, uh, the conservative movement within, it's a, a movement within Judaism. She might have confused it, but, you know, Michelle Bachman loves the Jewish people. <laughs> Don't you think she knows everything about that? Well, and, you know, the, the, um, you, you mentioned that it was Kol Nidre, that's the, the, uh, the service on the evening of Yom Kippur, so on the one hand, she wanted to join in, but on the other hand, apparently not with the fasting, because she got in and out at the start of things, but, uh, no, you know, it's a funny thing. A lot of, to use the term with a small c, conservative evangelicals uh, tend to have kind of a sense of ownership over the Jewish scriptures and Jewish ritual. There's, um, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I can't speak for all evangelicals and there are all kinds of different kinds of evangelicals out there. But the kind that I, the kind of evangelicalism that I see reflected in Michelle Bachman, Bachman's life and in her husband and the words that come out of their mouth remind me, speak to me of the kind of evangelicals for whom all of Judaism is just a prelude and an excuse for the saving power of Jesus Christ. So on the one hand, I'm not surprised that someone like that would want to peek in on how the Jews are doing their thing. Um, on the other hand, you know, it's a funny thing. I really do not like Michelle Bachman, right? But if she were to come to my right. school, I don't think I would march out. And I think it's unfold. I don't think people marched out, well, did they? one guy that was interviewed did. I don't know if a lot of people did. The guy who most openly mm -hmm. talked about, you know, now I think about the best way to... The way he put it was something like the best way to honor this unholy person would be to fundraise for her opponent. And I was also right. uncomfortable with that. You know, I really disagree with her, but she's not any more unholy than I am. You know, we're all we're all holy before God in in we're all part of the divine. If you see what I mean, I don't know if that's a very Jewish way of putting it, but right. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, we're maybe, all, I guess the way to put it is we're all made in his image. So, so is she, whether we like it or not. Yeah, but she, I mean, I guess I, I could sort of see right. what he was getting at, which was she right. came and, you know, essentially tried to desecrate this solemn occasion, right. very, you know, the, the holiest day of the year for right. Jews by making what was obviously a political appearance. Right. I mean, what, you know, although it was weird because, of course, she's running for Congress in Minnesota, right. and there she is at a Chicago synagogue, and I guess protocol required the rabbi to acknowledge right. her presence right. there, um, if not, you know, say anything right. more about it. And I could see, I mean, I think that the, the man you're talking about who's quoted in a Huffington Post piece that right. I read, I mean, he was talking about how her values were so contrary and uh, the opposite of what he thinks right. Jewish values are that, you know, that's why it was so right. offensive to him. I'm not sure that it was, you know, holy, not right. holy. Well, this is, I mean, literally, I, there was, there was a tweet a, to that effect. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But that, um, I'm now looking down at my page, sorry. In honor of this unholy person being in my synagogue, I've made the contribution too. Right. But, I mean, right. it, but to me it was really, I mean, it's a really interesting a conundrum because I do absolutely oppose everything she stands for politically. And a lot of that is based in my life of faith. You know, what I believe to be true and right about the world is based in my, in my Judaism. And at the same time, what would I do if she walked into my shul? You know, I don't, 
it it just it was really interesting to me to see my reactions, my internal reactions. Well, the doors are open right, to everyone, right? And at the same but time, the I don't hand, like it when people try to appropriate what belongs to me and my people on as as everybody keeps pointing out the holiest night of our year. You know, you really could have chosen a different day. So. Right, and the obvious political right, motive. Right, right, right. Which, as you say, is very weird. What was she doing in a Chicago synagogue when she could have, I mean, surely there, surely there are Jews in Minnesota, right? There are. I've been to her district. I don't remember seeing a synagogue, mm -hmm. but I didn't drive the entirety of right. the district. But, I mean, yeah, it's it, it, it was all kind of, I mean, I think that more than anything, it just demonstrated how little... Bachman actually knows right. about Judaism, that she thought it would be a good idea to show up. Right, that and that that would somehow be read <laughs> as being respectful. Exactly, right. exactly. Right, and there's, so, I mean, that's, well, part of, that's kind of a theme in, in the election season at large, to some extent. Jews right. as set piece, Jews as prop, <laughs> right. a thing that I'm not loving. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. you know, and we saw it, we see it with the... Um, with with the Romney's attempts to pry away Jewish votes as well, as if we let's talk about that. Let's 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 get to okay. that in a second. I just want to highlight. Uh, well, this is part of I. I think this was part of of this effort. Romney had a op ed in the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. yesterday where it was focused a lot on national security, broadly speaking, but also clearly was aimed at the Romney campaign's perceived. Uh, uh, well, their perception of Jews as being hostile right. to Obama because of uh, Israel-Palestine right. issues. Um, but they wouldn't say that. They wouldn't even use no. Israel-Palestine. No. But, okay. <laughs> so, but there was this one paragraph in the op-ed, and we'll put a link to it in case anybody who's watching this didn't didn't read it. And he's talking about the, the need for a change in America's foreign policy, a change away from uh, President Obama's foreign policy. And so that's the it that right. he's referring to here. It means placing no daylight between the United States and Israel. And it means using the full spectrum of our soft power to encourage liberty and opportunity for, the, for those who have too long known only corruption and oppression. The dignity of work and the ability to steer the course of their lives are the best alternatives to extremism. Now, I am certain <laughs> that he was not talking about the Palestinians there. Right. And not having liberty and opportunity and the dignity of work and the ability to steer the course of right. their lives, right? But I just thought it was incredible that clearly he wasn't talking about the Palestinians, but he had right. that there in that paragraph. Well, and then the interesting where he said there should be no daylight between the United States and Israel. The other the other thing that I loved about that was a few paragraphs earlier, if you will allow me to also read directly from the man's words. Yes. A few paragraphs earlier, well, he says... Dramatic readings of Romney's right, op-ed. <laughs> says, um, uh, amid this upheaval, and he's referencing, you know, everything that's happened in the Middle East in the past few weeks, our country seems to be at right. the mercy of events rather than shaping them. We're not moving them in a direction that protects our people or our allies. And then later talks about how we need to encourage these people, who are clearly not the Palestinians, to, and give them the ability to steer the course of their lives. So on the one hand, we're supposed to be shaping events. And on the other hand, talking about the value of, of people being able to shape their lives non, not, or steer their own lives, not under tyranny. On the third hand, Palestinians apparently don't count, nor, I'm guessing, Iranians, because Iranians are a solid right. monolithic evil. You know, right. it's the, the cluelessness upon cluelessness that is... Here's the thing. I think he's actually, and this is occurring to me just as we are talking about it. I, again, I thought this something similar to this in the past. He's not really talking to you and me. He's talking to people like Michelle Bachman. Oh, well, no. <laughs> you know? I mean, he's not really talking right, right. to Jews. He's talking to people like Michelle Bachman. He's, well, he thinks he's, you know, so he's, ta he's talking to this caricature right. of Jews that is promoted by Sheldon right. and Aosin, right? This idea that Jews are... Sheldon Abelson, right. that he somehow, because he has enough money to do this, that he somehow represents what Jews believe right. and what Jews want. And that's, I mean, not only is that a distortion of democracy right. because he's using his money mm -hmm. to influence right. the election in this completely uh, out of proportion way, 
Uh, but it's such a, I mean, it's, it's even, it's even nuttier than believing that, for example, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops represent all Catholics because they, they clearly do not. Mm -hmm. There are clearly plenty of Catholics mm -hmm. who disagree with the bishops on a lot of things. Um, but there, it's that they do represent the hierarchy right. of the Catholic Church. They do represent, there is a thing that they represent. Sheldon Adelson represents right. Sheldon Adelson. Right. Well, it's interesting um, how much the people with the people who are setting the tone. Um, what, what the term pro-Israel now actually means um, uh, pro Likud, sort of broadly speaking, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, and Peter Beinart recently referred to the carnivorous world of of Israel, I'm losing the last word, but the carnivorous world of political Israel, I don't know, cheerleading or something like that, which is mm -hmm. that that world is carnivorous and it's very, very pro Likud. And the people who are uh, the ones making the most noise on that side of the map are in fact the people with the money. So the people trying to influence policy, whether they be presidential candidates or anybody else, have this tendency to go for that money. But it, as you say, it doesn't represent the vast majority of us. I mean, 78% of us voted for Obama in, in 2008. 65% of us still favor him over Romney. Um, only 4.5 of us say we vote on issues of Israel, U.S. Israel. So I really do think that you're right. On the one hand, he's speaking to the Sheldon Adelson's Etc. And there are a handful of them. She, uh, Adelson is the one who's going to symbolize them all. But there are a handful of people with very deep pockets who are trying to buy this election. Um, and on the other hand, the Michelle Bachmans, who he's hoping to turn out for reasons that I I don't entirely understand the the, the politics of far right wing um, religiosity. What will turn up camp, What will turn voters out or not? But some of them won't come vote for a Mormon, right? But some of them might come vote if they think he's he's doing what they think, you know, what, what Hagee thinks he should say. Yeah, well, I think that there's been a strong push among uh, political operatives whose job it is to drive the evangelical right. vote. Um, so, you know, Re Rubbery, for mm -hmm. example, who is... Um, whose Faith and Freedom Coalition is engaged in, you know, voter mobilization mm -hmm. drives. And there are others. I mean, there are other smaller, lesser known um, people involved in this, in getting evangelicals to vote. And there are different ways in which uh, evangelicals are encouraged to vote. There are these prayer and fasting campaigns that are going mm -hmm. on right now. And so there, it's not just, you know, someone like Ralph Reed, but it's also in a less overt way, uh, these prayer and fasting movements appear to, um, and Pulpit Freedom Sunday right. and uh, events like that appear to, even though they may not explicitly endorse Romney, but of course they appear to be in favor of the Republican mm -hmm. candidate um, and not Obama. It's clearly um, uh, a mobilization against mm -hmm. Obama. Uh, and so I think that the number of people who are gonna, going to not vote for Romney because he's a Mormon I mean, I don't know that we'll ever be able to measure that, but I do think among evangelical leadership, there is a strong push to defeat Obama, even if it's Romney and even if he's an imperfect candidate. Well, I agree with that, that, but at this point, I think that Romney is probably rightfully, from the standpoint of his campaign, fighting for every single person who may or may yes, not darken his why... booth for any reason whatsoever. Well, that's why, you know, so it's, they think, you know, this is how the campaigns right. think about it. You know, it's all going to be about the margins right. in these battleground states. And so that's why they're running, the Republican Jewish coalition is running anti-Obama billboards in right. Florida because they figure, well, of course, you know, we, we've seen the AJC poll too, and we know that the majority of Jews are going to vote right. for Obama. But if we can appeal a few of them away in a, in a battleground state like Florida, right. you know, it, it's all about, about peeling people away at the margins. And so I do think, and I've written about this, that, that Romney's, uh, 
you know, I hate the word uh, the term pro-Israel because it's I, mm. it, I don't mean it in the way that uh, conservatives mean right. it, right? Uh, support but using it the for, way they mean it. for Israeli white right wing policies. It's not as snappy, but that's the okay. Way I put it. <laughs> okay, right, right. So if there was a shorthand mm. for that, that <laughs> his efforts in that regard are not just about. I mean, obviously, like I think there's a lot of stuff at play. There's the money that's being mm. donated by um, Adelson and others. But I, I do think that it's a, an effort to make uh, evangelicals who are in the Christian Zionist camp comfortable mm -hmm. uh, with him. And it's that's part of a whole package of, you know, abortion, same-sex right. marriage, Israel, the economy. Other well, it's interesting, um, that, um, it's interesting that you just mentioned abortion and uh, same-sex marriage because I happen to have just seen um, some polling that was done about the very loosely defined white working class who mm -hmm. everybody seems to talk about much like we talk about the Jews as if we know what the Jews do. We talk about the white working class, right? And mm -hmm. just like the um, recent poll that you and I are talking about, the AJC poll says that 61% of Jews say that the economy is the most important thing in, in their voting and something like 4.7% talked about abortion, or let me let me glance real quickly, but the po point is, I'm sorry, yeah, 4.7. Um, the yeah. white working class, 55% of them put the economy at the top, and only 2 to 3% put abortion and marriage equality as their most important issue. But I think that that, so the, I mean, you haven't really heard Romney talk that much about, about either of right. those issues lately. Yeah, that's right. right. So I, I do think that the campaign is, is um, hearing that voters are interested right. in the economy. Both campaigns are hearing right. that, right? But Romney, um, I think to the extent that he has uh, shaped or changed his political positions mm -hmm. on those issues, that has been about making evangelicals comfortable, yeah. mm -hmm. one, comfortable one, and two, enthusiastic. Right. Because that's a voting block that's so solidly Republican, right. but it can't just be 75% white right. evangelicals for right. Romney. He needs more like closer to 80% because, in part because of his deficit right. with other voters. So that's kind of the conundrum that he finds himself in if they're doing that, that sort of right. math. No, this right. is very true. It, with, with the numbers. So again, it's a, it's a little bit about that margin of evangelical voters who might be either... Um, possibly leaning towards Obama because they may be questioning things about Romney that don't have to do with the social mm -hmm. issues or evangelicals uh, that might stay home because they think that Romney's kind of, um, you know, a chameleon and not really right. one of them or not really sincere and, you know, they would be right, right about those things. Uh, so, yeah, but let's, let's, I th you know, I wanted to go back to the American okay, Jewish yeah. Committee poll, which, you know, there aren't that many polls that are just, just of Jews. And so it, I, I'm not a pollster. I don't know. But uh, it's it's considered a, a, a go-to mm -hmm. poll on what Jewish public opinion is. And something that, in addition to the, the, the number that you raised, that 4.5% mm -hmm. of respondents said that U.S.-Israeli relations were the most important mm -hmm. issue to them in, in the presidential campaign and deciding who they would vote for. 4.5% said U.S. Israeli relations was the most important. But then what your second is, only 4.2% said that it was second, and only 6.1% said that it was third. So, so, you know, even, it's not even in the... It's not even in the... The top three, top yeah, three. No, that's, that's quite true. That's quite true. But then the other, the other number that really jumped out at me when I was looking at this was, well, sidebar... <laughs> If you look at the answer on do you approve or disapprove of the way President Obama is handling U.S.-Israel mm -hmm. relations, he has very strong approval. We'll get to why that might be mm -hmm. in a second. But the, something I wanted to point out about Romney was that his choice of uh, Paul Ryan as a running mate among mm -hmm. Jews, very unpopular, oh, sure. very unpopular, yeah. right? So do you approve or disapprove of Mitt Romney's selection of Paul Ryan as his vice presidential running mate? Um, disapproved strongly, 41%, wow. you know, so, and, and then disapproved somewhat 22%. So you've got like 
you know, over 60% saying they right. disapprove, only 13% saying they approve strongly, which I think says a lot about uh, Jews' uh, um, alignment with the Republican, the current Republican right. ethos as encapsulated in somebody like Paul Ryan. Well, right? and, and one could have easily looked at Mitt Romney and said, you know, he's he's kind of going which way the wind blows. Let's the the VP choice indicates which direction he's locking in on. And if you're a Jew and you look at Paul Paul Ryan, the average American Jew does not like virtually anything the man stands for. So you're going to go right the opposite direction. Right. So as hard as the irony is, of course, as hard as Romney's trying with all of the money coming out of Las right. Vegas to win the Jews over, he really damaged himself right. probably with right. picking Paul Ryan. Well, is, but again, I think yeah. that we're 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 coming right back to Jews as set piece and Jews as prop because, yeah. you know, the AJC poll, in addition to being considered a good job, you know, a good um, measure, measure. Thank you. Um, it's, it also <laughs> reflects virtually every other poll we've ever seen, right? And maybe not precisely yeah. down to the exact number, but you know, it has a and it has an even bigger uh, right. sample. Well, and I've yeah. seen I have never once seen a poll that showed that Israel was the or or an in depth survey, which you know sometimes you see things that are really that that are really big and in depth coming out of the um, the Jewish Amer the American Jewish Values Survey is a pretty if I'm putting the words in the right order, is a really in-depth thing. Of all the things I've ever seen, I've never seen a higher number than 7% vote based on Israel, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and I've never seen anything below the 65 to 75% range of support for a Democratic president. So, right. so again, my point, and, I guess my point is that, again, <laughs> Romney and the, the Republicans using me and my community as a prop to say something else to somebody who isn't me or anybody like me. And, you know, it's a little bit like when when Republican politicians talk about birth control or about abortion or about uh, unemployment among men, and they're trying to gin up votes by blaming the women for something. There's a whole lot of talking about groups of people as if we were monoliths and using us to score points that have very little to do with who we actually are, in my opinion. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah, but I think, you know, so, I, but, I mean, while of course it's true that, you know, we're, we're they're clearly looking at the same polling right. numbers, and it's also true that there's, you know, we're talking, they're aiming at people at the mm -hmm. margins, not at the majority. Right. Um, so there's a sort of a disconnect between, uh, like a public perception of what the, what the Jews want. You know, I'm doing the air quotes right. now, <laughs> um, and uh, uh, and then a campaign strategy which is aimed at you know peeling away the people right. at the margins in the hopes of you know getting the few hundred or thousand votes that might turn tip a battleground right. state that's crucial for your electoral college right. votes. Uh, but something else that I wanted to talk about that's connected with the AJC poll is the approval. So, so one of the things that Romney is campaigning on is that President Obama has botched the um, uh, our, America's relationship right. with Israel. In the AJC poll, uh, to the right, they. they they were asked about their opinion, respondents were asked about their opinion of the way the Obama administration has handled U.S. U Do you approve or disapprove of the way President Obama has handled U.S.-Israel mm -hmm. relations? And approve strongly, 18%, approve somewhat, 42%, disapprove somewhat, 17%, disapprove strongly, 21%. So 60% of people approve. But we don't know what. Exactly. But we don't know what is the disapproval, Right. right? Is the disapproval from his left or from his right? And I think that that's something that goes unexplored. I mean, because obviously, like for presidential, for for the purposes of a presidential campaign, the people to Obama's left on uh, Israel U.S. Israel relations don't right. matter, basically. Right. I disapprove, um, but I'm still speaking. going to vote for him. You know. <laughs> 
Exactly. But I think that what, the, I mean, what I would love to see is more drilling down into that yeah. question of, well, why do you yeah. disapprove? Right. I mean, are you disapproving from his right? And are you going to vote for him mm-hmm. anyway? It seems like there's probably a lot of people mm-hmm. in that camp. They disapprove, but they're going to vote for him anyway. But is that disapproval coming because they think like Romney does? that Obama has thrown Israel under the bus or whatever, you know, the expression of the Mm -hmm. day is, or do they think that Obama, you know, are they criticizing Obama from the left and think that he's too cozy with Netanyahu, although maybe that is coming into question a little bit uh, recently. But but then, right, then what is your opinion of the way the Israeli government, led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is handling mm-hmm. the U.S.-Israel relationship. Very favorable, 17%. Somewhat favorable, 50%. Mm-hmm. Somewhat unfavorable, 25%. And very unfavorable, 5.4%. That's really interesting. So, you know, I'm just, I guess I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to make of that, right? Right. Well, other I mean, than I people I, are off, often hold contradictory emotions, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. or maybe not following it that closely. And we might not be following it as closely as, you know, people who write about this stuff follow it. All the ins and outs and the snubs and the not really snubs and the pressure and all of that. I mean, I I think a lot of people aren't, aren't following the play by play. Well, no, and this is exactly it. I mean, I think that, um, the vast majority of people voting uh, in November will not, whether they're Jewish or not, do not know the level of detail that you and I and, and um, people like my friend Jordan, who listen to your podcast, know about uh, know about this sort of thing. I mean, we follow these things in and out uh, very closely, and mm-hmm. we forget that people don't have the same knowledge base. And, yeah, I mean, I can kind of imagine someone saying, well, yeah, Obama's doing okay with Israel. Sure, I I support it somewhat. And then saying, what about Bibi? Well, yeah, you know, they've all got to take their positions. So, yeah, I'm somewhat supportive of that. I can, you know, if you're not following every move, you can can totally, I can can see that. You know, and that's not scientific measure, what I just said, but it doesn't utterly surprise me. Yeah, no, exactly. But I, I, I agree with you. There was another... Okay, I'm going to read, I really apologize for like all the power <laughs> right. of but I was sort of very exactly. interested in this because, precisely because, and not just because I'm Jewish, precisely because, like you said, Jews have become a set piece mm-hmm. in the campaign. In fact, like it almost seems like because of the, all the um, Adelson money that it's almost like we're talking about who will the Jews vote for more than we're talking about evangelicals or well, maybe Catholics are talked about a lot because of the contraception right. stuff. Um, okay, so what was the other question that I was very interested in? Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? Caring about Israel is a very important part of my being a Jew. Hmm. I didn't, I somehow glossed right past that. Tell me the results. I'm interested. Approve strongly. 38% approve somewhat 31% disapprove somewhat 12% disapprove strongly 14%. Mm-hmm. But I also kind of wonder that's kind of a weird question mm-hmm. because well first of all I think that it would be very hard for someone to say to a pollster they knew was calling from this organization called the American Jewish right. Committee to say mm, it's not an important part of, of being right. here right I mean I think there's going to be some category of people who just like don't know what to say in response to a question like that and feel uncomfortable, would feel uncomfortable saying no. Right. Um, But also again, like what does it mean to care about Israel? Because the question that's missing from the poll is what do you think about the occupation? Well, and that's, that is to me the most disturbing part of, of kind of everything we've been talking about so far. Um, The fact that, as we focus on the situation with Iran and as we focus on, you know, Jews with deep pockets giving money to Mitt Romney and Mitt Romney trying to talk to Jews via billboards and Michelle Bachman going to a a synagogue and who are they really talking to and what are they really talking about? We are completely not talking about 
the single most definitive issue in Israel's existence, and that is the occupation. And I think that's by design. I think on the American side of the ocean, no one knows what to do about it or has the will to do what needs to be done. And on that side of the ocean, the Netanyahu government is thrilled that nobody's talking about the Palestinians and the occupation. And yet that has got to be, like you say, okay, so Israel is an important, you know, all these people say in response to the American Jewish, you know, uh, committee questions, what, yes, Israel is an important part of my sense of self, but what do you think about this thing that Israel is doing? We don't talk about that. Right, because uh, you could interpret, I I wouldn't necessarily interpret it if I was being asked this by the American Jewish Committee. You know, caring about Israel is a very important part of my being mm -hmm. a Jew. To me, a very part, important part of being a Jew is caring about Israel ending the right. occupation. Yeah, the way in which okay. I care about Israel but is that was I not, want that's the not occupation what... to end because I think it's destroying Israel. Yes. <laughs> right. And and destroying the lives of Palestinians. It, yes. And, you know, so to me, that's a very important part of a, caring about Israel, but also caring about the world as a right. whole, you know, tikkun right. olam. And that, to me, is a very important part of right. being a Jew. So this question is obviously not asking me that No, question. exactly. Or, you know, if I were responded to the poll, they're obviously not asking that question. But that's the question they should ask. Because I don't think that we're really going to understand what American Jews really think about all of this stuff that they're asking about in the poll till they ask that question. And maybe, you know, you and I would be in a minority. Right. But I don't think the minority would be as small as people asked. think it would be. Uh, right. I think that... Um, and, and, and is that minority a minority just because, you know, the American Jewish Committee doesn't even ask right. the question, and so people are conditioned to think that it's right. not even a question right. to be asked? Right. No, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the simplest... It, um, it's things like... You go into synagogues and you go into Hebrew school classrooms and the maps don't show the West Bank, right? So mm -hmm. on this very, very granular level, kids grow up into Jewish community belonging without ever having to think about it. And then, mm -hmm. and then we don't talk about it and then we don't ask about it. And then if we do talk about it, we do it in hush tones and we, 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 you know, wrap it in this careful wrapping of, but of course I support this, and of course this, and of course the other. We have to say so many things before we can say the occupation is wrong and destroying not just the Palestinian people, but also Israel itself, that we never get and to yet, that. Right, and yet Pamela Geller, who put up those right. horrible posters in the New York City subway equating Muslims with right. savages, is described in all the press coverage of the posters and the response to them as pro-Israel. Right. I don't, I, that's the sort of thing that I, I like the very stereotypical vision of a cartoon figure head desking. That's kind of how I feel when I see stuff <laughs> like that, because I don't understand how, what, what pro-Israel has come to mean is supportive of right wing Israeli governmental policies. And Thus, the occupation and the settlements and hawkishness vis-a-vis -vis Iran. And I don't see that as being supportive of my other country. You know, it really matters to me what happens there on a very, very personal level, as well as because I'm an American Jew, because I started out an Israeli Jew. And telling me that I have to view the entire Muslim world as savages in order to be pro my home? is nonsensical and in, in, in to an extent that's difficult to even describe it's it's not helping and it's in fact very damaging to israel because it just closes off all all access to anything else there was something though that you were saying about um before we got on to pamela geller something about um I, I, perhaps it'll come back to me. There was something ab ab about the Netanyahu government that I wanted to get into, but I, it's not coming to me. So I'll, we'll carry on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I just, I find it all very, you know, the, the, in a poll, a poll is only as useful as the questions right. that it asks. Exactly. Right? And so, you know, it, you know, people in this AJC poll were asked about Netanyahu right. 
But, you know, here's another question that could have been asked, you know, um, do you approve or disapprove of the right wing tilt of the Israeli right. government? Do you approve or disapprove of uh, the anti-democratic legislation of the past two years? Yeah. Right. Or the treatment of um, uh, migrants right. in Israel. Uh, you know, I mean, there's. Well, one, I, I mean, here's, there, there's a whole oh, there's a whole lot of questions that I actually think that a lot of American Jews might say, well, what do you mean? Because if you're not following it at the level that you're following American mm -hmm. politics, the details might be um, eluding right. you, or you might not be that aware of the details. And there's this assumption. But it strikes me that, you know, if, if the American Jewish community wants to understand, wants to not just educate American Jews about issues relating to Israel, but, but help, um, you know, help them understand it and also find out what they think about it, they're kind of doing a disservice by not asking some of the questions that we're Oh, absolutely. About. And in fact, I, I remembered what I was thinking of, and it wasn't about uh, Netanyahu's government, but it was about how we talk about Israel. In the, I think it was written in June, there was a piece in the New Yorker about uh, Peter Beinart, my boss, and his book, and how there was a surprising amount of pushback against the book, Crisis of Zionism, from his left, like that people, or from the left, the Jewish left, that people were right. expecting it right. from the right, but the Jewish left was a bit of a surprise. And what right. the writer said, and I'm deeply sorry that I cannot remember his last name, his first name is Jason, um, uh, but what he said was that his impression is not that people so much had a problem with what Bidart wrote, but that it was talking about Israel in a way that we are not used to talking about Israel. They didn't know how to hold on to it. And I think that, honestly, if you've got Daniel Gordas saying in his review that, that Peter dis detests Israel, that's a quote, why does he detest Israel? And Alana Newhouse mm -hmm. accusing him of saying that you're not a good Jew if you don't love Israel, then they're not reading the same book. Right. You know, they're they're coming at it with expectations of how people are supposed to talk. And people aren't talking that way, so they're responding to the expectations, not to the actual words. And this is, the, I mean, these are, right. we, we don't allow ourselves to talk this way. And it's... Well, would you consider that criticism of fine art from his left? No, that's why I corrected myself. Not from his left, from the yeah, okay. stereotypical Jewish, in air quotes, left. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we right, can't exactly. see that. So we're doing air quotes right. to the camera, but we'll see them eventually. But um, no, not absolutely not to his left. The, the the criticism from his left is that he's still a Zionist and supports a two-state solution. But um, you know that's a very different right. thing than a lot of the new house. So yeah, 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 right. Um, well, I guess I would sort of consider some of that criticism that you just described as coming from the I would call it maybe the mainstream liberal Jewish right. side of things, right? Not I wouldn't think of it as okay. Enough. Or right. Even even being to the left of Beinart, I mean, I think that those people before his book came out were probably considered all sort of generally in the same. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And you're right to use the um, term so I think he's rather than left. Um, yeah. I, as because I think of the, the the criticism coming from Beinart's left, I'm thinking yeah. of you know Jewish Joe voices Weiss. for peace. Right. And, yeah. Um, no, absolutely. Um, I, uh, you and I had an email exchange where I said that I'm just so sick of the term liberal Zionist because it's so meaningless that, uh, I don't even use it. I've like expunged it from my vocabulary, but you're absolutely right that that's the better way to put it. And that's, that was the surprising part that one would have thought that, so, that some of these people were, were right in the same, you know, going to the same shul, so to speak, as, as Barnard, Beinart, when in fact they came out swinging. But I think that part of why they came out swinging was because, as this writer said in, in um, not the New York, or New York Magazine, I apologize, said, uh, okay. talking about Israel in a way that we're not used to talking about Israel. We, we're at this ridiculous stage where we still need to relearn the language with which we say things. We, you know, we still need to relearn the vocabulary of things like pro-Israel and Zionist and, and occupation. And, you know, it's Israel's 65 years old and we're just now beginning to talk about how we use these words. It's, it's crazy. It's a little crazy to me.
Yeah. I mean, I guess the whole, um, I guess there's a, there's a debate that's going on that I'm not that particularly tuned into, but that it's a debate about what does liberal Zionist mean, or is actually calling somebody a liberal Zionist almost a pejorative term, right? right? I mean, I I see it thrown around pejoratively about someone like Peter Weiner. Well, and probably about Um, me. I'm sure people say it about me because I still claim the dreaded Z word. I still call myself a Zionist. But I just, what get, I is guess, so frustrating yeah. to me is that we argue about these terms and we argue about how we talk and we argue about who gets to say what and we argue, we spill just gallons of ink on who's the boss and who gets to set the parameters and who's gone beyond the parameters and how that's not okay. And almost none of it is about the actual issue of an actual physical, living, breathing, modern nation state which is living as an occupying power of actual living, breathing human beings. Mm -hmm. It drives me nuts. The argument about what does this mean and that mean, and you can't be that if you call yourself this. Could we actually talk about the problem? Because the words are really boring to me at this point. If you, is what I feel like saying. It's about giving yourself authority to talk about it. Like you're, you're claiming authority to talk about it in an authoritative way. Right. And so that, if if you're one of those people who can't claim this label mm-hmm. or can't claim this set of mm-hmm. beliefs about what Israel is, then you're not allowed to talk about it or you're not allowed to speak on behalf of other right. Jews because you're not you're not representative right. of the thing that has the label that has authority. Right. But I just I agree with you. I mean the labels so what, you know, <laughs> I mean, I think that really the, what it comes down to is talking, well, I mean, some people can't even call it an occupation. Right. So there's that right. too. Right. You've got, you've got Likud uh, prime ministers who have over the course of time called it an occupation and American Jews who can't, uh, you know, I, what are we doing here? It makes no sense to me. Um, you know, and I have this, I continue to have this crazy notion that if we really want to talk about Israel's future, we need to take into consideration the uh, the needs and impressions and culture of all of the people living on the ground over there, both Israelis and Palestinians, rather than what we would impose on them and our expectations of them. It, or myths right, that we believe right, about. Right, right. Yes, absolutely. There's a, um, uh, again, trying to remember who wrote it, can't think about who wrote it, Maybe it was Bernard Avishai who recently wrote something about how many um, American institutional leaders tend to treat Jerusalem as an, the Epcot center of uh, synagogue orthodoxy. And my Jerusalem, I read that out loud to my Jerusalem born and bred husband, who is an atheist and son of atheists. And, and he just laughed because it's the truth. I mean, Jerusalem is an actual city full of real people. And a lot of people on this side of the ocean, it for, it's like the Epcot Center of, of, you know, an updated shtetl or something. Right. And the, yeah, oh, yeah, well, that, he, he also, uh, uh, Avishai also has a piece in the current issue of right. the nation. I think that's where I just looked at it. It's titled The Tale of Two, two right. Zionists. Right. It's actually, I actually got halfway through it yesterday. And I oh, it's brilliant. It. You want to find um, Oh, my God, I love him yeah, so Yeah, no, much. yeah, it is. It's really good. Uh so, uh, yeah, and also just the it, it, the Epcot Center thing is funny because, yes, it's true. I mean, people go there to see certain uh, right. sites or see certain right. things, um, and, uh, you know, if you drive through East Jerusalem, you're going to see something very right. different, and are you going to do that, right. A, and are you going to acknowledge that... You know, and are you going to go to Tel Aviv? The trash isn't picked up and there isn't any police security and, right. you know, well, and the, I mean, normal things that people should have. Even to for me, it, even before you get to, will you consider who the Palestinians really are? Before you get to that point, will you consider who Israelis really are? Or are, are, mm-hmm. is the community on over here so intent on this, this Vaseline smeared lens of the heroic Israeli resurgence of Jewish nationalism that they can't even see Israelis for who they are. You know, I get such enormous bona fides from the fact that my, my husband was born in Jerusalem 
It's ridiculous. Why is he a better Jew than me? Why is he a better Israeli than me? Because he was born there. Because he's got the word Jerusalem before or after his name, you know? It's, it has nothing to do with reality. And it's very frustrating to me because if we can't see people for who they really are, we're not there. Again, we're all just treating each other as set pieces. And the Palestinians matter too. And real Israelis matter too. And we have to look at all of them. Well, I mean, there's that way of arguing it too. And then there's the way of arguing it similar to, uh, you know, what Gershom Gorenberg argued in his mm -hmm. most recent book, that this is going to undo what Israel right. is unless, you know, so, so, or what Israel might hope right. to be or was initially envisioned or, you know, just not, it's not sustainable for a country to continue the occupation as Israel is continuing the occupation, right. essentially. So well, I, um, in the middle of services, one of the ho high holiday services, I think it was Yom Kippur, when our rabbi was doing the Mishi Berach prayer, which is where you pray for the good health of, of those in need, I muttered mm -hmm. under my breath to my husband, the state of Israel. And he muttered back to me, the, the Zionist dream. Because, you know, I, it, it, we mutter in, in cynical frustration because it is clear to us that something's dying. That we're too busy cheerleading its shadow to take care of it. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for Israelis and Jews to think first of their own people and secondarily of Palestinians. But it's not unreasonable. It's not reasonable to not think of Palestinians at all. Everybody thinks of their own first. I understand that. But the Palestinians are right there. And if you really are worried about the Jewish community and, and Israel, you need to really look at it. You need to not just cling to your memories of what you were told in Hebrew school in third grade. Again, I want to say to other people, not to you specifically. <laughs> I'm using the word <laughs> you a lot. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seems like a good place to yeah. wrap up. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having so, me. We really, we started yeah, at a for doing it. broad level, and then I managed to bring it right down to my own synagogue, my own backyard. No, that's good. That's, you know, start with the general, go there to the specific. Go. So anyway, well, thanks All for right, doing well, thank it. Thank you so much for having me. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye.